Whee! Oh boy, oh boy. Oh my gosh. Hi there, RC Girl here. So today I'm back with part two of the Tiny Hawk Ready to Fly kit. We are ready to fly this thing. So I'd suggest on your first flight, find a nice grassy area, do it outdoors. I know it's an indoor racing drone. So this is 75 millimeter indoor racing drone from Emax. And I have the full kit. So it includes the goggles, the transmitter, the Tiny Hawk itself, and all the batteries and everything you need to get going. So today we're gonna do our flight portion. If you missed the first video, feel free to check it out. I'll put part one here. I did an unboxing, went over to some of the features and some of the programming to get you set up for your first flight. So this is my first FPV setup, but I've been playing around with this for like the last week and got a couple extra batteries and I'm good to go. Getting a little bit more experience and getting more comfortable. As a beginner, your tendency is, is to want to hover around, but it's actually a lot easier if you keep the drone mo moving, you can orient yourself a lot better. So we're gonna try and keep the drone in the park area, keep it moving and just uh, have some fun. So let's get our setup going, get our goggles on, everything plugged in and we're gonna launch the drone. So I actually picked up a set of batteries, extra batteries, because there's no way you can learn four minutes at a time. So I got 550 milliamp, one S LiPo. So I got four for 20 bucks. I'll put a link to Amazon. I got them on Amazon and they match up to the Tiny Hawk perfectly. And they're a little bit higher capacity than the one it came with. So you'll get a little bit more flight time. Okay, make sure our transmitter's on. The light's a little bit hard to see during the daytime it'll beep and you know that's on and with your goggles i mentioned this in the previous video but there's no on switch so once you connect the power source right here it's going to be turning the goggles on and you don't want to do that without your antennas attached or it can ruin it and so what i did learn is that you want, want one antenna straight up and then one to the side so that's going to get your signal going this way and also going that way so you'll, you'll get the maximum signal with your goggle setup this does not have a digital video recorder, so fortunately we can't do any recording, but I'm gonna put my phone up to it after we do a couple flights and you'll be able to see what the footage looks like through the goggles, so. All right, I think we're ready to go. So to arm the drone, it's this switch here, and then these are our beginner intermediate experience modes, also known as angle, horizon, and acro mode. So you're gonna to wanna to stay in the angle mode for your first flight. Acro, you're gonna be able to do some crazy flips, and I haven't even switched into that because it's just berserker. So we're gonna start in the angle mode. And then here, so the first click on this one, that'll do a beeper. So anytime you lose the drone, I always click it to that so I can find it out in the field pretty easy. And then the second click, it arms the drone. And so that's gonna make it ready to fly. So arming, it does have some propeller movement with the arming. So you're gonna wanna make sure that you place the drone on a flat surface and you're not gonna do any uh, cutting off of your fingers. The drone's a little bit dirty already because I've <laughs> been getting really close to the grass and doing some trimming of the grass on accident. So, whoops. Um, but yeah, it's a sturdy little guy. Crashed it a ton actually, and it's held up really well. Lost the propeller already. So it does come with some extra propellers. And one thing I didn't know that I'm learning is that two of the propellers are the same orientation and the other one are the opposite. So you, when you replace any of the propellers, make sure you're selecting the right one and you align it with the um, motors. So these are on. All right, let's do our first flight. We're gonna arm the drone. I'm gonna place it down, one of these sandbags here, and make sure you keep it moving. Whee! <laughs> cool. Wee! <laughs> Wee! I did turn up the rates a tad. Whoa, boy. <laughs> Sweet. Yeah, so just keep the drone moving. It's actually a lot easier to fly with the goggles, I'm realizing, because it's the same orientation. You don't have to flip it around in your head when you're coming at you. You have to flip the controls around, so. This, you're always in the same orientation. It's pretty sweet. I'm gonna have to get some of those like coarse little setups where they have the rings and stuff. Cause then you can tell how high you are and stuff. Without any like landmarks, it's a little bit hard to tell your elevation, but yeah, just keep flying it around. 
The goggles do tell you your battery voltage, so if it gets below a certain percentage, or low, if it gets below a certain voltage, it'll let you know with a warning on the screen. I'm gonna come straight at us right now. Whee! <laughs> Whoa! Super fun. This is awesome. I've been flying it around in my house and there's a lot of like trees and stuff. And so I've been like learning to go under the trees and like under the hammock. Um, but yeah, this is really nice to be able to just open it up and not have to like worry about crashing into anything. So, sweet. This is awesome. Whee! I'm just gonna do like a little circling around. Coming back at us. This thing, so yeah, it looks tiny, but it's actually like pretty, pretty mighty, this drone. It's really, it has really nice, con okay, low battery. Stop talking. So when it says low battery, it gives you a little bit of time to come at you, but I would say pretty much start to end your flight pretty immediately. And then you wanna make sure that you disarm the drone right when you land so the propellers stop spinning. Um, but yeah, there we go. That's awesome. Super fun. So not a huge flight time, um, but if you have a bunch of batteries, you can have them in your car charging and keep them going and you'll have a constant stream of batteries pretty much. So four minutes at a time and even after a week, my skills have improved substantially and it's just a ton of fun. I was a little skeptical of being into FPV or not. I wasn't quite sure. Is it going to make me nauseous? Am I going to like it? But I've been flying pretty much every day and it's so, so fun. So definitely got another RC bug. <laughs> so. All right, let's, uh, let's try this again. I'll link the goggles with the camera so you guys can see what it looks like on the footage. And yeah, let's take it away. All right, so let's go. So the reception's pretty good. I mean, it's not terrible. I've seen some footage and it seems pretty standard as far as reception. And these are lower end antennas, so kind of introductory. And I think that's gonna be actually my first upgrade. I've been looking at, into it and people say one patch antenna and one omnidirectional one. I think those are like the mushroom, little wire mushroom looking ones. Um, and the patch ones are like the little flat squares, I think is my understanding. So I'm gonna look into antennas, but for now I think this is perfect. I haven't really lost signal and we're in a pretty big park right now, so you'll get some instances where you'll get less better reception if you're like behind a tree or something, but yeah, this is pretty awesome. This thing's really fast. So as I mentioned, I did turn up the race a tad in beta flight. So if you guys are interested in some of the programming about beta flight and getting started with that, feel free to check out my previous video, but I did go into setting it up and stuff, so. Make sure to check that out if you're interested. And there's also, I mentioned in the previous video, Project Mockingbird, and they go into how other people have set up the rates and stuff. It is a little complicated. So this drone though, the ready to fly kit, everything's ready to go right out of the box. You don't even have to do any of the setting up or messing with the rates at all. You can keep it as is and you should be just fine. Low battery. All right, so we're gonna bring it back. So as you see, it does show that low battery warning when the voltage drops below, I think like 3.3. And sometimes it'll do a burst and so your battery will, voltage will drop below that, but. This thing is super fun. With Betaflight, you can change where the position of all these warnings and stats and stuff are on the screen. So there we have it folks, the Tiny Hawk Ready to Fly kit. This thing is so, so much fun. I was actually pleasantly surprised and shocked by how much fun this thing is. If you two have been looking to get into FPV for a while, like I have been wanting to learn for a long time and just really didn't know where to start. So this is a great kit for you to consider. 165 bucks for the whole thing. Transmitter, goggles, battery, Tiny Hawk and everything. So this will get you started in FPV. I'm already thinking about my next upgrade. Want to get some better antennas for this thing. As I mentioned, I already lost a couple of props by running into power lines or something and I just couldn't find them. So I'd recommend picking up a couple of those. I think it's $2.99 for a set. So super cheap, pick up a couple so you have a couple spares. Definitely want to pick up some extra batteries. So make sure to like and subscribe as always. Hoping to bring you guys more content in the future. Or see you later.
Ui. Just doing circles. Wow, I can feel the breeze of that one. <laughs> oh, it's funny. Oh boy, oh boy. Oh my gosh. <laughs> it's so fun, it really is. You guys gotta try this. If you thought that you were into FPV or wanna get started, this is a great kit for you to consider. So. A lot of fun.